stirring the coffee with chopsticks using the vortex method, the only true way to optimize the taste of your coffee. At the molecular level. Good morning. Welcome to the Daybreak Show. I am the Sultan. We'll get started. Let's look at Twitter. What does Twitter have to say today? Everything that I said yesterday. You a freak, but she a super freak. Men, don't forget that. Keep that in your mind. You think you are the one who has all the sex drive. You are wrong. She has twice as much as you, but she doesn't want you to know it. That's her little secret. Don't doubt me on that, please. <laughs> so I guess axe throwing must be a popular first date. Dating sites are filled with pictures of women with axes and these wooden targets behind them at axe throwing centers or whatever they call these places. Every guy thinks he was clever by taking her there. Little does he know that she's been there three times this week. Dude. Dude. Listen to me, dude. That picture that you saw of her with her axe on a bullseye and she's standing next to the axe, that was taken by the last guy that took her there. 90% of the pictures that you see, men, on dating websites were taken by the last guy that went out with her and said, gosh, you look so pretty. Can I just get a picture of you from across the table? So you see these pictures of her like this. That was taken by the dude who took her out last week and then texted it to her thinking he was doing her a favor. Men, stop that. Stop that. The pictures that you take of her on your dates will be, and text to her, will be used by her to market herself to the next guy who takes her on a date. Be contrarian. Do the opposite of what you think, of what initially comes to your mind. That, that type of conditioning, you think, you think it's going to get you further. It doesn't. You're just another notch on her belt. Stop it. Stop it. Be a man of value. Pursue excellence. That's not being a man of value. Okay? Being a pussy is not virtuous. We're going to talk about virtues and vices one of these days. Some will only need you around when you're doing well. They're the type that collects broken things, and they live off of broken things. Then, when you're better, you are no longer necessary or available to feed their pathology. And then it's on to the next one. Always be weary of relationships. I'm talking to you one-to-one. -one. Look at me when I'm talking to you. Always beware of any kind of relationship where you have met somebody when you were down or not in a good place. What made them be attracted to you when you were not the best version of yourself? Because when you improve yourself, when you pursue excellence, when you become a better version of yourself, they are no longer going to need you. They needed somebody who was broken. Hmm. Are you with somebody who met you when you were down? But you give them credit, saying, Man, you were with me through the dark times, through thick and thin. There's no future to that. Both people have to be pursuing excellence. It's not 50-50, it's 100-100. Keep that in mind. You liking me is not a pre-existing condition for me liking you. I watch many pipe smoker channels on YouTube and beard channels of people who basically don't like me. I'm perfectly okay with that. It's not okay with them because I see their comments. That's perfectly okay. People love their own misery and they hate people that are moving on and speak confidently about things. That's okay. 
Let's read a letter or two. I think, I think you're going to enjoy the letters that I read to you today. This is from Joseph. I just wanted to say another thank you for your content. And I first emailed you in July of last year. You inspire me in more ways than you can know, and I have been watching your videos since the big beard days of 2016. I once called you the American Gandalf. Joe, I remember you. You made yourself memorable. Thank you. Out of the thousands and thousands of people who follow me, I remember that. And I actually use that hashtag several times, American Gandalf. Because of you and a handful of other individuals, I have started my own YouTube channel called Joe Jam Free. While my subject matter is different to the topics you cover, my channel is about autism awareness. Okay? I know quite a bit about autism. I have learned a great deal from watching you and how you present yourself on camera. Having had actor training, I am also able to put my practiced skill to good use. You always seem to find the right words, which is a gift that few possess. You have a quiet but straight, well-mannered demeanor that I recognize as something I share with you. Unstuck is a big goal, and at 23 years of age, I'm not there yet, but watching your videos gives me the motivation to work harder towards making it happen. I've always aimed to be a high achiever and have often been recognized as such. I intend to reach a 1,000 subscribers by the end of this year and have begun to set myself bigger goals. As you once said, if people aren't laughing at your goals, then they aren't big enough. Joe, you are correct. And I wish you the best. And I will give you a shout out. Joe Jamfrey, J-A-M-F-R-E-Y. I haven't watched your channel yet, but I will direct people to it and I will look for it myself. So thank you for your letter. Charlie from Michigan writes, This is a relatively long message. Truthfully, I'm saying this because I value your opinion. That being said, I do not expect a response. Either way, I appreciate your time and consideration. I'm a longtime subscriber to your YouTube channel. I stumbled across you by accident and remember when you had under 20,000 subscribers. I'd like to thank you for the time and dedication you put in every day to help others give the mindset to live a most excellent life. I'm a male closer to 20 than 30. I'm engaged to a spectacular woman. You're engaged to a woman. Leave the adjectives out, it, out of it right now. Okay, That's, That came pretty fast. It jumped out at me pretty fast. We connect on so many different levels. When we fell in love, we more importantly fell into understanding. Okay, now you're using my words. Okay. Our entire relationship has been honest and pure-hearted. Oh, this is going to be a good one. We never cheated on each other that you know of. And at the start of our relationship, decided we would never share each other with anyone else. Can you already see where this is going? That being said, we were recently presented with an interesting opportunity to have another female join us in the bedroom. Neither of us had any prior experiences. Ah, all right, so they invite a, a third person over. It's a woman. I don't want to get into the details. Things get lovey-dovey. All three of them end up in bed. The girlfriend, uh, the fiancé, says, uh, go for it, dude. She takes his hand and she leaves the room. He starts doing something to the other female. She's in the bathroom. The other, His fiancé is in the bathroom crying. Uh, you're just like the other men, she says. He's like, what? From an objective standpoint, we were three legal age consenting adults after a long conversation. I felt overwhelmed with regret. This is such an out of character action, even though for me to have, I am fiercely loyal to my closest allies and would never do anything to intentionally hurt them. Or damage a meaningful relationship. 
after more conversation, that's your first mistake, my fiancé and I both agreed to discontinue what we're doing. Our friend was planning on staying the night anyway, so we all bundled up back in the bed. Then I began falling asleep. I woke up at the sound of moaning, looking over to see my fiancé giving oral sex to the other woman. At this point, I became incredibly confused. <laughs> You're going to see a lot of uh, discrepancies here. A lot of things that he says and a lot of things that he explains are completely contradictory. I thought I had reached an understanding with my fiancé that we were doing this with thought, yet she continued without being my aware of the situation. Naturally, being a man who enjoys sexual release, uh, I began advancing into the situation, only to be met with much resistance from both my fiancé and the other woman. For the first time, I felt unwelcome sexually with my fiancé. They were severely more enthralled by each other than to allow my entrance figuratively and literally. From that moment, I began to experience erectile dysfunction. Again, I'm closer to 20 than 30 for the first time. Yeah, that was a huge cock block, wasn't it? For the first time, I felt inadequate. Being moderately handsome, well-built, confident alpha male... This is a new experience for me, and to be honest, I don't know how to feel. On one hand, I feel betrayed because my fantasies fell flat, but on the other hand, I know my fiancé enjoyed herself. I typically enjoy knowing my fiancé is enjoying something I do, even if I don't entirely benefit from it. Words and actions are not matching here. I will say about you, sir, that you are acting like a female here, and I will give you the same advice that I give to men. And that is, believe what she does, not what she says. I'm believing what you do here, not what you say. I don't wish any harm to come from anyone in the situation. Our intentions were pure-hearted to begin with. Pure-hearted? I don't know what to think of the situation. It hasn't quite settled in. All I know is I feel inadequate and confused. I think that is your major feeling right now. I'm seeing alpha, well-built, handsome, and then inadequate and confused. What is it? I tend to think it's the inadequate and confused by this. Truthfully, I don't know what sort of advice I'm seeking from you, but I have the utmost respect for you. You are far wiser than I, and I know I've already learned much from you. I can't thank you enough for everything you've done for me, whether you know it or not. You are a hero to me. Thank you. And he gives his name. Well, we'll see how much of a hero I am after I give you my thoughts on this. I don't have real strong opinions about this because I'm the kind of person that thinks everybody should... You should be able to do your own thing, but also uh, I can't shield you from the consequences of doing your own thing. So your consequences judge you. I don't judge you. I always ask everybody, how's that working for you? It's a rhetorical question, I ask, when I feel something isn't working for them, because it sounds like it's not working. And then the person usually answers their own question. It's not working, of course. Your actions and scenarios should make you feel better. When you do things, you do things out of pain or pleasure. Okay? Apparently, these did not make you feel better. We live by the rules that we make for ourselves. So you might need to make different rules if you're not feeling well. But, again, this is the beauty of the Stoic life, is that you don't live by your damn feelings. You have values, and you stick by your values. Feelings will come and go, but your values remain steadfast. I predict scenario failure. Because you're addicted to disappointment, you put yourself in situations that can never win, and you can never prevail. Ever. So this situation can never work in the long run, and I predict there's going to be just a lot of pain. Like Mr. T said, I predict pain. You might need to do the contrarian path for a while, because your compass is not operating properly. Simply being, do the opposite of what you initially think. 
do the opposite? Was it... Uh, I might be mixing up a couple different characters and concepts here, but I remember George Costanza talking about the contrarian effect, where if you just do the opposite, you might succeed. And I believe there is some wisdom in doing the contrarian effect with things. I remember, was it George Costanza that said something like, women hate me. I like that in a woman. You are throwing the dart and it's never hitting the bullseye. You're missing the mark. So you need to do one of three things. Try a different game, try a different dart, or aim at a different bullseye. That's my opinion, and what you do with that is up to you. I know it's a cold, hard truth pill to swallow, and I do hope that helps. Are you addicted to disappointment? Do you put yourself in scenarios where you just can't win? Have you done that for months, years, decades? You know I'm getting serious when I take my glasses off. Do you feel like you pissed your life away by making bad decisions? I know you're having your coffee with me this morning. I know. And for some of you, you might not be experiencing things, or you're just, this is more of a freak show for you. But some people, this is speaking to them. And I know you right there. Look at me. This is talking to you. Your compass is off, and you're living by your emotions. You say one thing and do another. You're watching too many memes watching Instagram, buying into way too much alpha male stuff. You know what an alpha male is? When you're in a room and shit goes down, here's a good, here's a good example. If you're in a room, a big room somewhere with people, and shit goes down, and you want to grab a few people to help calm the situation or... You scan the room and you, and you need three other guys. You instinctually will go for alpha, whether you're a man or a woman. You will instinctively, instinctively go to the guy or the guys that are natural leaders and look like they can handle the situation so it doesn't go foobar on you. It's the same thing with social scenarios. I'm well-built, I'm handsome, I'm confident. Okay. Do others think that? Because this situation just revealed that you are not an alpha male. You might be on the outside. On the outside. On the inside, you're not. Now, this is not the alpha male channel. This is not the red pill channel. This is not the, I'm not, I don't do all that stuff. Although I mix with that crowd, I intersect with them on occasion. That is not the focus of this channel. And that is not the focus of my life. What I need you to do is reassess your decision making strategy. It's too emotional. Back away from it. Remove the emotions from it. Look at the facts. The facts tell all. Emotions come after the facts. You create the facts. The emotions that you're feeling now are the result, are the consequences of the facts and the scenario that you created. You are responsible for feeling inadequate. It's you, not the other person. What if you took 100% responsibility for everything in your life, even your health, the direction you're going in, where you're going to move? Most people only move because of another person. Can you imagine being so focused on having direction that when you finally do invite someone into your life, it's to compliment you and to join you and support you in your mission. Focus on your mission, not the woman. Then, 
Ladies, focus on your mission and not the man. That way, both people can have a satisfying life. We'll get into more of this tomorrow. Finish your coffee while it's still hot, and I'll see you tomorrow on the Daybreak Show.